All right, so I'm out here on the cliffs in Pacifica. Kind of a breezy day, overcast. Uh, this is a location I painted quite a few times, but it's been a while. Uh, so I thought it might be fun to revisit and see if there's any change in my approach. Uh, when I come to a familiar spot, I try not to look at the paintings that I've done previously. You know, try to approach it with fresh eyes. And I'm thinking of doing a square composition and I want to include some of the land over to the right here. Uh, and then also I will include the horizon. There's some hills in the distance. Um, so I'll be including those as well. There's a lot of beach visible right now, so I might kind of have the water coming in a little bit closer. Another problem I see is that this line right here or this shoreline along the bottom of the cliffs, it's kind of a straight line. Uh, so I might want to break that up as well. All right, so I'm gonna be painting on a 16 by 16 inch panel. I've got my usual palette of colors, but I do have a few uh, guest colors left over from a previous painting. Cerulean blue, pure cobalt teal, transparent yellow oxide. Using Liquin Original as my medium. Lately, I've been using natural bristle flats. Uh, you know, I'll use the large one here, which is a number eight for scrubbing in, and then this smaller number four, probably for some of the you know, detail around the water line. All right, so I toned with burnt sienna and I'm gonna sketch with burnt sienna. Going with a high horizon here. And then, let's see here, something like this. And then water line like that. Right here, there's a grouping of rocks, something like that. As I said, I want to keep this sort of irregular in shape. And these maybe go out a little further, like here, and then a few rocks down here on this point. And there'll be a white water pattern in here. And I want the waves to kind of be coming in in a radial fashion like that. So starting horizontal in the distance, maybe I'll lower the horizon a little bit just to get the hills in the background. Something like that. All right, so along these cliffs, there are some uh, changes in plane. In other words, it's kind of steep right here. Over here, it's basically kind of coming in like this. So as usual, I just got the rough shapes first, and now I'm kind of, you know, gonna start fine tuning uh, some of these shapes. It's important to get those big shapes in place, you know, before you start fine-tuning your drawing many times I've you know invested time and energy in developing a drawing only to realize like the placement of everything is is terrible <laughs> it's not gonna work uh, and that's you know then you got to just kind of wipe it down and start over again which is always discouraging All right, so there's a compositional idea. Uh, in the past, I, you know, kind of cropped right here and didn't include the foreground. Uh, but I do think that, you know, just having this kind of curve come in like this sort of leads the eye naturally into the painting and then off into the distance and maybe like to this peak out here. So, you know, there's sort of a comfortable path for the eye to go into the, into the, path, into the distance and enter into the painting. Down here, um, I did shorten the amount of sand or like I narrowed the amount of sand that there is. Uh, in real life, it's, you know, it's quite a bit of sand. So there it is. So next step will be just as usual, start um, blocking in some of the darks. All right, so I'm starting with a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I am adding liquin as well. And this is the closest color I have to um, black on my palette. And it's nice, uh, you know, being able to shift it more towards blue or towards red if I want. Today I'm going to go sort of towards blue. This mixture is going to be for my darkest darks. 
and actually right along the water line here especially in this area it's not the darkest darks the darkest darks are these rocks actually and there's a few more like right in the water here and I'll probably break up this like I said I'll break up the water line here a bit This has been a problem area for me in the past because it's just looked like this straight line right in the middle of the composition, which I do not like. Um, it's another advantage to returning to, you know, a familiar spot. There are certain, you know, pitfalls or whatever that you can look out for. And also there are other, you know, little uh, tricks that you find that might work or not tricks but features that you can include you know that have worked in the past when I first started painting I, I just kept wanting to find new spots to paint and I would never paint the same place twice if I could help it and then I would sort of get frustrated like I'm running out of locations <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous but you know I was always on the search for something new you know, nothing wrong with that. That's exciting too and could be fun. I'm going to gradually lighten this mix. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it as well. Some ultramarine blue. Kind of like a gray mixture here. All right, that's kind of dark. All right, so I'm going to add some titanium white to lighten it up a bit. All right, that's a little better. My approach does vary a bit uh, from painting to painting. You know, sometimes I'm in the mood to just paint something large and really be aggressive about it. And then other times it's fun to just take my time and look for little intricate changes, like in the rocks or uh, in the waves or, or whatever. And so today I'm feeling like I have patience and, and I'm just enjoying just looking at the little shapes out here, the different shapes and trying to capture those. I can already tell I'm going to need to warm up this uh, this blue color, but again, these are all just, uh, you know, this is just a starting point and then I'll, you know, I'll adjust things later. All right, so I'm mixing up a color for the water using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. And the uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine are sort of complements because burnt sienna is kind of an orange color and the ultramarine is obviously blue. And so I like to gray down my colors using complements. And the sun is starting to come out, which is making the colors and values change, but that's all right. I don't mind, uh, you know, it's part of the adventure. So mostly what I'm looking for at this point is just, uh, you know, a value pattern. And I can tell already that this value is a little bit dark. That's okay though, because as I've talked about before with water, uh, there's the you know sort of the base color of the water and then you come over the top with the sky reflections so I like to paint you know I'd rather paint the water in a little too dark and then uh, you know and then come across uh, like on top with the lighter reflections of the sky and it gives that uh, it gives it that sort of two-tone uh, effect which creates you know a sense of depth I'm leaving little areas here that, you know, potential whitewater areas around the rocks. And this color in here closer to the rocks has got quite a bit of green in it, so I added some cadmium yellow medium. I'm trying to keep the mix a little bit thin here, so I've got some transparency.
All right, so I want to darken up the water a bit. I'm using ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna, a little bit of titanium white. My usual mixture for the water, but I'm just mixing a little more blue in and keeping it a little darker. Uh, the light is changing quite a bit, so you know when the sun comes up, there's a stronger contrast between the water, the dark water, and the white water. It's pretty dramatic looking, so I want to kind of capture that in those moments where you know where the sun is out. And again, I will be coming across the top of this with sky reflection. So there will be areas where it's, you know, a bit lighter, but I'm getting a uh, better contrast with the white water now. And then closer to shore, this is darker as well, but it's got more green in it. So mixing in a little bit of cadmium yellow medium. And I've actually used this number four natural bristle for the whole painting so far. I thought I would use uh, the number eight but the panel is just a little too small for that. Um, you know, this brush, when I press it down, it's got about a half inch stroke to it, which is just about right for this scene. All right, so if I look at the cliffs compared to the white water, they're much darker than I have them painted, so I'm gonna mix up a darker mixture. So I'm using titanium white, yellow ochre, a bit of burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. All right, and that's, that's a bit better there. I'm definitely getting some contrast. I'm going to still keep this thin because I'm going to... I am going to add some, you know, some stronger pops of color. But I think that that relationship looks better. And there's like a darker area in here. Mix in some dioxazine purple. And whenever I mix up a color like this, I'll look for other, you know, areas where there are bits of that color. And even if I don't see exactly that color, I'll just sort of, you know, add it so that there's, you know, so it's not just in that one location. I'm gonna add a touch of cadmium yellow medium. There's an area up here that almost feels like it's got sort of green in it. All right, so now I'm mixing a mixture for some of the sky reflections on the wet sand. I darkened this area with sort of a dull purple, but right along the edge where it meets the uh, dry sand. There are little bits of sky reflection and the value shift uh, between these two is very delicate and if I can get it in one stroke I prefer to do that. So I keep loading the brush. Alright so here is what I finished up with. When I started this painting it was overcast uh, but then by the time I finished, it was completely sunny. So it was a total uh, change of color and values. My approach to dealing with issues like this is I will lay out the arrangement or, you know, a composition that I feel will work, whether it's sunny or foggy. So I don't have to do compositional changes. All I have to do is color and value changes. Uh, so the paint application process was the same as usual, just, uh, you know, scrubbing in approximate colors and then uh, making adjustments with thicker paint. When the sun comes out, typically um, there's higher contrast with everything. I had to darken the water and also darken the sand here. Uh, I think it would have been nice to do this on a 20 by 20. I feel like I was kind of restricted in here. It, it could have been nice to have a little bit more room to swing the brush. All right, so I do my best to share as much of the process as possible but there are times during the problem solving phase, like especially if there's some challenging problems I'm trying to figure out, it may take me, you know, two or three tries to figure out a certain color or a value or some kind of relationship that's not working. Uh, and so I cannot, it's really difficult for me to film that and to talk about it. Uh, sometimes I just have to stop filming and focus on the painting. Uh, but in those cases, I do try to communicate later what was going on and what I was thinking about. So I just want you guys to know I'm doing the best I can to communicate as much as, pos as possible about the process. And I think I will get better at that the more I do of it. Um, and so anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.